Hello and welcome back to the Daily Express's Royal Roundup. We are joined by Daily Express's Royal Correspondent straight from Warsaw. He is live with us now. Very lucky to have him on board. Uh, Richard, welcome. Uh, what's the weather like over there? Very mild, actually, yeah. It's been, lo- it's been nice, yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Very so, nice uh, so I can't show you. I didn't have time to find a venue um, that would have been uninterrupted by uh, people out in the street. I wanted to find a nice picture that said, this is Warsaw, but instead you've got my hotel bedroom. I'd say the hotel bedroom does look very nice, nevertheless. Um, you've had a busy couple of days, haven't you? So so what's been happening over there? Give us give us a little glimpse. I know I've seen, it, of course, on your Twitter, all the videos that you've been putting up. Yes, yeah, so um, Prince William uh, came to uh, Poland yesterday um, and um, the, the the visit was unannounced. I mean, you know, in journalistic terms, it was shrouded in secrecy. Um, there was tight security around it. Um, I think there were concerns because he was going to um, a place in southeast Poland, um, sort of 40 or 50 miles from the border. So still some distance from the Ukrainian border and much bigger distance from the fighting. Um, but um, the place he was going to is sort of, it's a military hub. It's the place where um, uh, Polish and NATO allies, uh, including the UK and the US, are funneling um, weapons into Ukraine and um, training people um, to use the weapons uh, across the border in, in, you know, against, against the Russian uh, invasion. So um, there was a little bit of sensitivity about it. So it was mm. agreed that we we it was all embargoed until um, <clears throat> uh, six p.m. local time here yesterday, five p.m. UK time, um, until Prince William had arrived in back in Warsaw, um, and it more or less held. I think uh, it. I think some of the Polish media started. Um, reporting on it slightly before the embargo time. But um, anyway, they don't, there doesn't seem to have been that much concern about it. So no. um, it's one or two fan sites on social media spotted it very quickly, even though the pictures weren't up on, as I understand it, the pictures weren't up on agency websites um, till 5pm London time, 6pm Central European time. Um so yeah, so and then he's been in Poland. He's been in Warsaw since then. Um, he's done um, three engagements today in the capital, mm. and um, he's on he's on his way back now. Okay, so uh, obviously uh, the reason why he's gone over there is the the war that is happening and and shining a light on it for him. Have you seen a different side to him? Perhaps an emotive side uh, of him. Obviously, you know, speaking to families who've been affected by by all of the travesty that has been happening. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think one of the things we've seen is a very statesmanlike William. Um, right. This to me seems like a a step up for him. Uh, he's also he's been quite punchy actually in some of the things he said. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you, you always get this debate about can the royal family be political? Well, they can't be party political, but there is a a wide consensus in the UK that um, the Russian invasion of Ukraine is a bad thing that needs to be resisted, and that if we don't help, we in the West don't help um, the Ukrainians now, we'll be fighting a war against uh, Russia or, or and and some of possibly some of its allies in the near future if we don't stand up to the aggression now. Yeah. So William, you know, William has um, been so he's been to meet some of the Polish um, and a few British people who have been training Ukrainians over here. Um, he's been to see Royal Artillery soldiers who are um, really protecting the eastern flank of NATO. Um, you know, with sort of multiple rocket, multiple weapon systems that are um, there to protect against any Russian aggression on Poland itself. Um, and he, he talked about how important their role was, and you know that they were here to defend our. 
Um, and we've also seen him, um, you know, he was very... One of the interesting things as well is that royal visits um, are often taken at the request of the British government. And there's always a little bit of a mix, you know, the, the, the royal household meets with government officials and they often they meet to decide what visits are going to take place. And sometimes, um, you know, they've got diff slightly different agendas, but they reach agreement. And usually it's um, members of the royal family taking, uh, d doing visits at the behest of the UK government. But on this one, we're led to believe this was very much William's idea. He really wanted to come over to thank the Polish people for the support they've given to Ukrainians. I mean, they've taken in roughly 2 million refugees. Um, yeah, huge. But also to recognise the importance of the, the military effort, the relief effort to support the Ukrainians. So, I mean... I can only imagine um, that William wanted to do this, but I'm sure he wasn't the only one um, in the royal family that wanted to do this. I mean, it, you probably know what question's coming next. Why didn't Why didn't Kate go? Because I'm sure he most likely would have would have loved to have gone to also express her gratitude too. Um, yeah, it's a good question. I, uh, I guess she had other things on on Tuesday when they were preparing for this and. Um, it was his thing. I mean, he doesn't need to be a, they don't need to do everything together all of the time. I mean, you know, last year in February, for example, we saw um, the Prince Kate go to Copenhagen because she wanted to find out how the Danes were doing with um, their provision for children in the first five years of their life and what lessons she could learn and Britain could learn from the Danes. Um, it's her project. This this one was William, William's thing, really. Um, but you're right. I mean, I think other members of the royal family would like to come over. And I, you know, I, I certainly heard the king say in Milton Keynes a few weeks ago that he would really like to go to Ukraine. That he remembered going years ago, and he would love to go back. But given the sensitivity over even coming to Poland, I have to say that that a royal visit to Ukraine doesn't look likely at the moment. So do, you politicians think, going. so do you think it's purely to do with security that the king didn't go? I think so, yeah, for the moment. <clears throat> I think so. okay. But, but I mean, it is interesting, this trip as well, in that um, um, Kensington Palace, in describing um, the, 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 the trip and um explaining it to us when 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 we were when they were planning it but also in public um statements on social media or whatever have has talked about wanting to um meet um british and polish troops involved in the war in ukraine that phrase involved in the war in ukraine surprised me slightly because we are we are aiding the Ukrainians. We're sending military aid to the Ukrainians, but we are not officially at war with Russia. We're not officially, as far as I was aware, involved in the war in Ukraine. And it's been noticeable, actually, that um, today the Russians have picked up on that. And the, the Russian forest, foreign ministry spokeswoman has um, um, picked up on also on this controversy over Britain saying that it's going to send depleted uranium shell, shells to um, Ukraine for use in, um, in tanks, um, British tanks that are being shipped out there. And um, the Russians are really playing this up, sort of saying it's, it's an escalation, that it amounts to nuclear war. And, you know, Britain wouldn't agree with that at all. But she said, you know, has William brought the depleted uranium tanks, uh, tank shells out with him. Um, so, so, I mean, do you think that perhaps, I mean, we've spoken about this before, but obviously this this situation is obviously very unique and everybody, um, you know, from the US president to various politicians on differing parties have obviously all met in the, in the the on the same page about this. So... Yeah. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask this question. I kind of know the answer, but do you think it's a bit dangerous about you know mixing slightly on the political line with the royal family with with potentially very dangerous outcomes? 
Well, I think it's it's not risky in the sense that um, they are reflecting the the views of the UK government and, and of a pretty wide consensus. But I, I I say I was slightly surprised by the use of that phrase involved in the war in Ukraine, and mm. um, uh, you know clearly the Russians um, were were. Um, surprised by that as well and are, and are using it to escalate this sort of diplomatic tension over this and sort of threatening to escalate things from their side against the West. Um, I mean, I think you could, um, you know, it's not unreasonable to speculate that the fact that there is a royal visit happening like this and that there is talk of... Um, uh, and that, and that that and that the palace is talking about British involvement in the war in Ukraine. You know, does we, some people might think that it's softening us up for further involvement in the conflict, but I, I don't know that to be to be a fact. I, I'm just saying that uh, I was surprised by the terminology used there. Has William indicated that he'll be going back? No, he hasn't. He hasn't said anything about coming back. I mean, look, see, he he and Kate were here in 2017 with um, Prince George and Princess Charlotte of course, uh, of course. on a visit um, where they where they also went to Germany. Um, but it is, I mean, you know, in in parts of the world and particularly America, coverage, media coverage of the royal family is treated as entertainment news, and it isn't entertainment news. You know, they are. Um, sort of superior diplomats if you like and the um this is this is although it was his idea to come he you know he's done it obviously in conjunction with the british government and um we you know we're seeing that next week um the king and queen camilla are going to france and germany on their first um overseas or their first state visits um since the new new reign began and that's again all about Building European solidarity um, in the in the resistance to Russian aggression in Ukraine. We've spoken about Kate before, getting uh, you know uh, over the years, getting quite light, fluffy headlines being associated with her work and what she does in the royal family. And you've just said. Um, uh, in regards to you know the media sometimes uh, looking looking at these stories, not yes. specifically this one, um, but other stories, and and uh, making light headlines out of them, is this something that William as well is also well aware of over the years, and not so much um, it uh, just landing on his wife, but also him. Sorry, I missed part of that because I was looking at a quote from an American, a response from an American uh, woman who was saying that she disagreed that, um, yeah, Denise Porter Noel saying, I'm in America and I disagree. It's real life, not entertainment. But I, I, if you look, quite often the people writing about the royal family in America are entertainment news reporters on TV. Yeah, showbiz. Um, yeah. So, sorry, you were asking about about the the fluffiness and um, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I guess I mean we I don't think you picked this out for us to discuss Pandora, but um, earlier this week we saw the Princess of Wales calling for a revolution in the workplace. Um, mm. This is quite tough, I would say. Um, this is you know a lot of. A lot of the online coverage has been about her wearing a white jacket and how this is, you know, the must-have item for the new season. But um, uh, she actually called for a, a workplace revolution to put social and emotional um, development um, at the heart of it. And so she was talking about um, employers needing to help their adult employees develop their social emotional skills so that um, people could um, solve problems, discuss things more easily without sort of having rows and tantrums, um, but also for employers. I mean, she didn't put a lot of detail on it, I have to say. It was quite vague. But she also was talking about employers um, putting the needs of their employees' children particularly those in their first five years, at the yeah. heart of what they do. And um, 
you know, obviously that, that will have implications for employers if they take heed of that. She started a, um, a business task force that has got eight um, fairly major employers on board. And I think the hope is, hope at the palace is that more will come on board. Yeah. Um, but and of course, then- employers are facing economic um, hardship at the moment and they're cutting back dramatically. So if you are saying as an employee or as a trade union representative perhaps um we need to make better provision for our employees so that um you know they can work home more flexibly or um uh, work fewer hours um because they have child responsibilities that is not a message necessarily that will go down well with some employers at the moment who are trying to cut corners cut costs wherever they can to make well, any- well, oh, quite. I mean, but lots of people would say, would then turn around to Kate and say, well, what does she know about working in a normal workplace when, you know, she works in a, an institution, a very traditional institution, which has been going for, for many, many years? Uh, what what would you say back to that, Richard? Because that might just be one of the arguments that, you know, people might say. Well, yes, and I think the other thing that people say is, what does she know about this? She's not got any qualifications um, in, in um, early years development. But she has become um, pretty knowledgeable about it by speaking to lots of experts, I suppose in the same way that we as journalists, um, you, know, you, can be a, you can be a science correspondent without having a PhD in nuclear physics, physics or... It's true. It's true. You make um, a very good point, Richard. You make you know, a very good point. There are skills you, could, you, you can have that enable you to um, reflect what the experts are telling you without necessarily having the all of the academic background that they need. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's that with her. And I, um, I think she is... Um, Determined to make, um, make bring, change. About, bring about societal change, as she called it. And I hate this word passion, but she's obviously got a passion uh, for it. That's for sure, because yeah. it's many, many years of work, isn't it? And she yeah. wouldn't be doing anything that she yeah. didn't want to do. Um, yeah. And also, you make a good point about uh, journalists, but also ministers, ministers for education, ministers for health. You only have to you only have to look there to to see. You don't have to have a qualification within those subjects. Uh, exactly, government ministers change their role every eighteen months. I mean, if you chat to the Exchequer every few weeks, sometimes in the UK, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. They, yes, they don't necessarily have the, the background in in the areas that they're responsible for. No. Okay. Uh, Well, that is the latest from Warsaw and uh, some of Kate's work this week um, for the senior royal side of things. But stepping down from the senior royal side of things, um, there has been a story which has been going around online sites uh, this week. Uh, Prince Harry warned drug use could threaten US visa in massive blow. Richard, is there any truth to this? at all i mean he's obviously spoken about his his drug use now in in several interviews obviously in his uh massively popular memoir whether you liked it or not he does speak about it in there so there's no refuting these claims really um mm-hmm. but the us uh visa scheme does have quite a strict drug policy so what do you know about this? Gosh, well, well, what I do know is when I applied for a visa to go to Boston earlier this, oh, sorry, last year, mm. um, the, the, the visa questionnaire runs to, I think, over 100 questions. I mean, and wow. yeah, they're very detailed about it. Uh, it is interesting. I mean, you know, we, we talk about, so I've talked about the, the two main things that I've been writing about in the paper this week um so far online there's a different audience a different um a different vibe really and um uh all of this stuff um on harry and megan particularly you know gets lots of engagement people are very divided about them people have very strong views and they click on stories about them so 
I haven't written any of these stories about um, Harry and Meghan in the, in the last few days. Um, in fact, I can't remember when I did last write a story about them. But, um, yeah, I mean, there seems to be still a lot of interest. So um, uh, this story is about a um, conservative group in the US, the Heritage Foundation, um, um, asking for um, Harry's visa to be revoked. I mean, it's not clear quite <clears throat> on what terms he is residing in the US at the moment. Um, there's been an assumption that he's been granted some sort of visa um, on the basis that he, I mean, he's, he's married to an American woman, but I don't think that's necessarily enough um, uh, in the first instance. Um, this is where I have to say I'm not an expert on US immigration policy. Neither am I, neither am I. Terms and conditions apply. But, yeah, but um, he, uh, they're so, uh, yeah, this conservative group is saying he should, you know, he's basically should be kicked out because he's admitted to being a drug user. Um, is that going to happen in the near future? I very much doubt it, um, not least because we have a Democratic president in charge. Um, mm -hmm. But this particular group has been quite influential in the past. I mean, particularly, I believe, um, uh, when Ronald Reagan was elected president, I think um, he essentially followed its programme in his first few years uh, as president. So if um, the Republicans win the next election, then perhaps this becomes more likely. Um, I mean, for me, I suppose it is more evidence. It's interesting. It's more evidence of the political divide in the US over this couple, how they have become um, yeah. touch paper for political differences between liberals um, who generally, um, if they know about them or care about them, are generally in favour, and conservatives who really don't like them, as far as I can no. tell. Well, we, I mean, we'll we'll talk about that more in depth in just a minute, actually. We'll come to that, and then we'll come to coronation plans, the last thing, because mm -hmm. I think it syncs quite well. But we took this to a poll first. Um, so let's have a look at the poll on this Prince Harry subject to see what you guys thought about it. Um, because it was thought, well, perhaps, you know, let's say this did happen, Richard, which, which you've said, very doubtful, let's say it did. Do you think he'll come back to the UK? Yes, 30%, no, 70%. I mean, that's quite an open-ended question. I'm not saying, you know, whether he could be coming back now. I'm talking about, you know, perhaps in several years' time. Do you think he could ever come back to the UK, Richard? Um, it's hard to see him coming back um, while he remains married to Meghan, I would say. And yeah. Who knows where their marriage is going to end up, I would, you know, I always look at the Duke and Duchess of Windsor as a comparison. And of course, no, no, nobody, no two lives are the same. And it's perhaps not, for, not that helpful to, to compare, but um, they never came back to live in the UK. And mm. they, um, whilst I don't think they were always uh, ecstatically happy in their marriage, they stayed together um and um there's nothing at the moment to suggest that harry and meghan um won't stay together as well so i think in those circumstances it's it's just really hard to see them coming back to the uk to live yeah especially especially at the moment um well uh, he's also hit headlines this week as well even though obviously you've not been writing about it richard other, other people um, have thought about some comedy sketches, perhaps. Authors have come up with lots of different ideas off the back of this of this book, Memoir Spare. Um, and apparently there's a parody version now of the book. We obviously saw South Park, um, which we discussed on the Royal Roundup. Uh, and it's called Spare Us. Yes. Uh, uh, so, so the more spare reaction. There we go. There's a... There's, I think, the, the parody, the parody picture there. I can't wow. imagine Harry will be too happy about that. I won't lie. Um, but 
you were saying, Richard, just then in connection to this story, how they're still, um, you know, dividing uh, people in the US as well as the UK and the shift is starting to happen. Well, yes, I think so. Uh, you know, we've seen a number of opinion polls that seem to show that they'd lost support among um, all sorts of people in the in the US as well as in the UK. And in the US, um, it, it, there was one particular one in uh, uh, that was commissioned by Newsweek magazine, commissioned, undertaken by a professional independent polling company that showed um, that the Sussexes had, had lost support, um, had really lost the support of um, the 18 to 24 age group in the US, which you know, I think most people would say you would expect to be their core group of supporters. Mm, that doesn't that doesn't bode well. But I mean, I mean, we've seen this journey um, through the time. You know, when when they first came, um, you know, out officially as a couple, and then how the popularity has skyrocketed, then come down, and 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 now obviously they're, they're in the US, so that adds a whole new dimension into these things. Um, but I thought it would be interesting to bring that up. I think we also have another poll on this, and then we will come to coronation plans. Um, so let's bring up this the poll then do you think the reaction to prince harry's book has been fair and justified yes 75 percent no 25 percent um richard i think it's only fair um to to give you the final note on this subject seeing as you have um you yourself have been writing uh, about uh this couple from the very beginning has it been fair and justified in your opinion richard um Yes, I think so. I, I guess the um, he, they, the couple might think not in particularly um, when it comes to um, the reporting of Harry's comments about his death tally and his kill tally in Afghanistan. Um, I think he didn't like the suggestion that he'd been he was boasting about it, but that's just a matter of interpretation, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, it's, that again is a fairly open-ended question. Um, what has the reaction been? Well, it's sold really well worldwide, um, but also it seems to have um, crashed his popularity and his wife's popularity. So, yeah. yeah. To, but then again, they have made millions and millions of pounds, and some of that money has gone to charity. Oh, should I say dollars? Sorry, dollars, not pounds. Um, OK, that's enough, I think, about Prince Harry uh, for today. I'm sure uh, he'll be coming up on another Royal Roundup at some point. But let's talk about coronation plans, because every week it draws closer and we give you a little update as to what's happening, what's been released to public knowledge. Um, now, not everyone will be able to get uh, to London that weekend, I'm sure. It will be very, very busy for those who can, and that's fantastic. But that does not necessarily mean that there is not going to be other celebrations happening up and down the country. Um, but just these big screen plans alone, Richard, are apparently costing millions of pounds. Well, uh, well one million, I think. Yeah, one million no, pounds. Um, oh, sorry. Just, yes. the, just the one. <laughs> just the one. Well, just, well, just the one million, yes. Um, and I was interested in that because it's been very, very difficult to get any information out of the royal household or the British government on the estimated cost of the coronation. They really don't want to tell tell the media, tell the nation how much taxpayers' money they're spending on it. And um, and I I really don't understand that because I'm pretty sure that it'll be a drop in the ocean compared to the sort of vast sums of money we saw wasted, for example, during the COVID crisis. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm also pretty sure that the majority of the public will say it's money well spent, it's going to showcase our country, it's what we do best, et cetera, et cetera. So, yes, <laughs> um, it was announced um, by the DCMS, the Department for Culture, Media and Sport, that um, a million pounds had been allocated to local authorities to erect um, big screens in um, some of our major cities to allow thousands of people to come together to watch the coronation and, um, in some cases, the coronation concert on the Sunday um, that the BBC is doing from Windsor Castle. Um, 
uh, to watch to watch that all together. And it, it it I think it sort of dovetails with what local authorities around the country are doing also on um, on Coronation Day uh, and over that weekend, sort of creating festivities, um, local community events, um, just bringing people together uh, because it is a once in a, it's not even a generation. It's, you know, it's 70, it's 70 years since we had a coronation. Yeah. And that's yeah. the other thing about the, um, about the cost of it. Uh, the U S has a, um, inauguration for its new president every four years. And according to a piece that somebody linked me to on online, um, on social media, um, from the New York times, that, that inauguration cost two hundred million dollars each time. Wow! Roughly. Wow! So I'd be very surprised if if this coronation, this once in a seventy year coronation, is going to cost anything like that. And um, things we're speaking about the US. Obviously, you can expect the president to be there and the first lady. Can we expect um, anything alongside that? You know, they they do come with their own security plans themselves, don't they? Well, <laughs> I'm not sure we can expect them. I I, um, I don't. I, I, I believe that the White House said two or three weeks ago that it it wasn't expecting uh, President oh, Biden. Really? Uh, yes. Yes. God. Uh, okay. I, think, I, I mean, I, I'm certainly something. Some heads of state will be there. I mean, I, um, Prince William earlier on today uh, met the uh, Polish president and said he was looking forward to the president and his first lady coming to the coronation. Mm. So, what about um, uh, name escapes me now? Kamala Harris. Will she? Will she be there potentially as a? Yeah, I'm sure. Well, I don't know. I, I don't think the U.S. government has has indicated who it will send, but I'm sure it will send. It will be invited, and somebody will be sent. Um, but it, that really surprises me that Joe Biden's not going to be there. That, very, that does very, very much surprise. Well, I don't think it's confirmed 100, percent but that was the indication from the White House. Well, we won't know until the day, will we? We won't know until the day. Um, but that is the latest on the coronation we find out something new every week it seems so uh time is ticking it's not actually that far away now it's really not uh, we're not already nearly at the end of march um so i'm sure lots of plans are going on behind the scenes up and down the country um and especially in in the royal households but richard thank you for coming on and spending the time uh coming uh online from uh from poland today much appreciated um uh, very very fascinating fascinating insight from there um but we'll be back hopefully at the same time next week uh richard will be joining us from who knows where he'll keep us on our toes well well i mean we haven't discussed it i'm, I'm going to be in um germany on thursday oh, well then there we go you'll be yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll have to try to figure out how i can do that it would partly depend on um you know, we have this system of pool reporting and uh, yeah. so it'll depend on, on where I am and, and what responsibilities I've got. But I'm sure we can figure out something anyway. We'll try. We'll try. I'll try and find stuff. somewhere more picturesque than a hotel bedroom. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Um, but nevertheless, uh, thank you, Richard, for coming on. Um, and you can catch all of what Richard is up to over on his Twitter at Royal Reporter. You can obviously stay tuned um, on our Daily Express Twitter too. You'll not only see royal stories in there, you'll see political stories, all sorts. But if you are just a royal avid follower, um, then you can catch all of our playlists on our Facebook. Uh, we go live on YouTube every Friday at 4 p.m. M2. And you can also catch us on Instagram for all the latest exclusive lines from the Royal Roundup. Richard, thank you.